Please take your hats off. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Jane Roberts is going to come up and sing the national anthem for us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars citizens who will stand by us and help us support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. Foreign and domestic. Right now, what the Oath Keepers do, we've all taken an oath to support this nation. I'm going to give you the opportunity to either renew the oath if you've taken it, or take it for the first time. So please, again, remove your hats, Raise your right hand, Don White, the acting chapter president for Massachusetts, is going to administer the oath for us. Wherever Don is. Oh. After I say I, please state your full name. I, Don White, do solemnly swear. Solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation Freely, freely, without any mental reservation, or purpose of evasion, pledging my life, my fortune, and my sacred honor. So help me God. I wanted quickly to read one quote that I thought was so appropriate, especially today, especially in Connecticut. It was taken from a letter by George Washington to James Madison. 
Very simply it says, no morn ever dawned more favorable than ours did, and no day with every more clouded than the present. Wisdom and good examples are necessary at this time to rescue the nation from the political impending storm. George Washington. Again, we have to be calm, we have to be vigilant in what we do. God bless America. Outside of Connecticut today, let me hear ya. Thank you. I understand we have people from the West Virginia Citizens Defense League here. All right. Mississippi Carey. Scope from upstate New York. New Hampshire. Massachusetts. There's a lot of other states. I can't count them all. There's 57, right? Get, get some filmage going. I already got some good stuff. Thank you all for coming out today. I left my camera. My name is Scott Wilson. I am the president of the Connecticut Citizens Defense League. I am proud to stand before all of you on this day. We are marking one year since the governor of this state essentially made the Second Amendment a privilege and not a right. Good to see you. That does not sit well with any of us. Last year, during the legislative session, Governor Dan L. P. Malloy referred to us all as the fringe of the fringe. This was the label that a sitting governor attached to people that go to work, pay their bills, raise their children, and pay their taxes so that they can try to live in peace. This year, Governor Malloy made the claim that our side lost and that we should just get over it. I don't know about you. I am only not over it. I am madder than hell. This failure of a governor makes this statement as if Public Act 13-3 is some sort of permanent fixture of a law that can be never changed. That this law can never be repealed. That a law that is passed by this legislature and signed by this governor is the final word of how we must live. No way! This governor and too many in our state legislature seem to feel as though we must just sit back and be quiet and accept this as a wrong in the while they poke at us around our cage doors. This is all the act that we get a stream is passed at a time when the legislature and the governor were facing a lot of scrutiny for the report of decision making in the areas outside their own firearms. A tragedy that small private towns can make the gaping lawmakers tremendous cover for the physical condition of the state. Gun control was a fig meat that concealed their disastrous failures. 